Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. I'm uh Sitting in the trailer today because, well, when we were at the time where we were originally going to record, Robert was going to be sanding and making noise mm -hmm. in the construction zone. So, oh uh, yes. So I set up out <laughs> in the trailer, and then he's now done. I was already set up, so I didn't didn't move us back in. But it's it's pretty nice out for Salinas. You know, it's sunny, mm -hmm. and um, that's better than cloudy i'll just say yes well it's raining today oh okay so uh, ours is better than yours you, yeah you're better than we are uh it's well i don't usually complain well that's that that's actually not true i do complain <laughs> about the weather that's completely untrue <laughs> what i was about to say what i say is i don't normally feel like we have good summers or bad summers but this summer i have to say has been a little cool uh, yeah ours you know, has too. been in the 70s mm -hmm. kind of and a lot of very overcast days a lot of days where it's really um, muggy and kind of oppressive feeling uh -huh. you know, air movement that kind of thing but um we always say in the pacific northwest that summer really doesn't start until like the 5th of july but that is completely untrue this year yeah it's a very maybe you'll get cool a nice overcast. august yeah, August when in typically August and September and even sometimes in October mm -hmm. are really nice here. So yeah, I'm hoping. us too. Although last yeah. year we didn't. We had a we had a cool spring and then mm -hmm. and then we had a cool fall as well. So, but we can't complain too much because I heard that in the Midwest, I guess they're having a heat wave and oh. they're getting ready for some some very hot weather. Oh so. wow! Well. Um, anyway. But I have to say, I didn't tell, we were delayed um, recording because I had plumbing problems. Oh, I have dear. to tell you what happened. I was washing <laughs> the dishes last night, and I'm like, and I had on um, flip-flops. I thought, why are my flip-flops wet? <laughs> and the pea trap under the sink had fallen off. Oh, no. <laughs> so all the water that I'm running is just going underneath the sink, and it's now coming out onto the floor and running across the kitchen floor. So I oh my gosh. ran down. I, I turned off the water, and um, I uh, have a like a dish pan that I stuck underneath there. And then I ran downstairs to get some old towels to sop up the water, and I get down there, and it's now coming through the floor of the kitchen and down into the basement. Oh, no. <laughs> so, and I was really worried because Kim, uh, that I went to Scotland with, um, she has a lot of boxes down there of her father's... Um, uh, after her father mm -hmm. passed away, there's all this paperwork, and he was an author, so there's a lot of um, boxes of his um, manuscripts and stuff down there in the basement that she has to go through. Fortunately, they're in plastic boxes, and the water's coming down next to the boxes, not on the boxes, oh but gosh. I was suddenly like, oh my gosh, these boxes. Panicking, so I, was, I, yeah. I panicked, and I just, I immediately just, I grabbed all the boxes and dragged them to the other side of the room, and then grabbed the towels and went up and sopped up the water. So well, that's what I was working on. make a recommendation that when you panic, don't run down the stairs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, I should, yes. I should walk, per I, I should not run. I should walk per purposely yes. down the stairs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, and then to add to, add to that too, we <laughs> down the base, there's a laundry chute. And uh, these towels are in a plastic bin um, on a shelf right by the laundry chute. And then also stacked up on these shelves, though, at covering up the boxes of plastic bins of towels that I need to get to is a big four by eight sheet of plywood that we always would put underneath the Christmas tree so that we could have an electric train run around, mm -hmm. it, you know, for fun. And that's leaning against these boxes of towels. So then I go and I have to get this plywood. I lean it over. 
uh, to get to the plastic bins. And then this morning I go and I'm throwing laundry down the laundry chute and I get down there and it's hit this board and just flown everywhere because <laughs> it's now, because <laughs> underneath the laundry chute is actually a, pl- a basket that catches everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, now it's covered by this piece of plywood. So like everything is just flown all over. The- oh gosh, it's so funny. So anyway, today, that's what I was doing this morning is I thought I have to fix the pea trap on the, um, so that delayed me no. uh, for recording. But anyway, but here we are. Yes, here we are again so, with a yes. with a actually a more regular episode this time. We have some mm-hmm. questions to answer, but we're also going to do some project updates and stuff. Yes, but before we do that, I we want to just uh, say thank you to some of the people who. Uh, wrote reviews. Yeah. Um, so um, Mom Diggity Knits said that she loved the episodes featuring Marsha and Kim's trips to Scotland. And she took notes. So maybe I have a future as a travel guide. Maybe there I There you know. go. She's on the Ravelry boards occasionally. And I think mm-hmm. she did say she was going to be taking a trip. So. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And uh, Canyon Ren 2 said it's one of my absolute favorites. That's really oh, nice that's to nice. hear. That's nice, yeah. And then Holo Kilu um, said that she's working backwards through all the episodes. <laughs> and which I'm not sure how that works. You listen, but anyway. Uh, and but then also she wishes. Me- <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> I just got what you just said. So when you said, I don't know how that works, you're thinking like she's listening to us talk backwards like when you play no, no. backwards and the no, secret no. messages are in there there's a, yeah there's actually a secret message no like she, i get well I, well I assume that she's listening to episode yes you know yeah. 115 in reverse order when, yeah. in reverse order yeah. i guess like, yeah no we don't have any secret messages if you listen to the podcast backwards <laughs> that'd be kind of fun to try That's, yeah i don't know if it's possible but um, uh, but she also says wishes that we recorded every week. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's not going to happen. No, I can tell. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's but very nice of everybody super, to yeah. write reviews. Really yeah, nice really, to, yeah. to hear. So um, project updates. I have lots of finished stuff. Because it's been a long <laughs> time is... since we talked about finished projects. And also. It, well, it's been a yeah, you're a little sedentary right now. Yes. And, well, it's been a long time, and I'm a little sedentary. Um, and because we were recording, I, like, finished up loose ends on a bunch of things that weren't quite finished. So, mm-hmm. first of all, my Assam cardigan is finished. And I didn't run out of yarn. I had enough. Good. I didn't. I mean, I used the yarn you sent me, but I didn't have to buy more. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was going to talk about it last time because there was a question about seaming. Um, But I thought, well, um, we didn't get to it. I kind of forgot about that and our episode was long enough. But I do want to talk about that seaming process now because it was very interesting. So this uh, cardigan is by Laura Chow. She's the designer. And it's not a new design. It's been around for a while. I don't think there are a lot of projects It's knit sideways, so you start Mm -hmm. with the sleeve cuff, and you knit across the sleeve cuff. Then once you have finished, like, the sleeve cuff, and then you do the sleeve, and then you get to where the body should start, and you cast on stitches. So now you've got everything from the from the lower back all the way to the lower across the sleeve and to the lower front. And you knit that for a while, and then you bind off stitches. That's the front. You know, that's the opening for the front. You keep mm-hmm. knitting across the back, and then you uh, cast on stitches for the lower f- for the front on the other side. And so now you're going, instead of going from the back up to the back neckline, you're going from the lower back up past the back neckline, across the sleeve, and down the front. Mm-hmm. And then you bind off again, and you just finish up your other sleeve. So when you get all finished with that, and that had been done for quite a while, um, but I hadn't sewed it up. Um, And so when you get all done, then you just, I mean, basically you fold it in half, right? Mm -hmm. And you sew the sleeves. And so the sleeves, if you think about how those stitches are, the sleeves get sewn up with mattress stitch because Mm -hmm. you have stitches meeting stitches right side up. 
right? A, a column yeah. of stitches meeting a column of stitches. And so that was done with mattress stitch. And I have to say, I love mattress stitch. I used to be afraid of seaming things. And then I took a class on mm -hmm. mattress stitch at um, Monarch Knits in Pacific Grove. Mm -hmm. And Corinne did such a good job on that class talking about how to seam with mattress stitch um, that I don't, I just love it. I like how invisible it is. I, I like how it's, it's kind of magical. Anyone who wants to learn how to do mattress stitch should look up a video or look up a tutorial. But once you've, so, you know, you've picked up or you've, you know, sewn through your stitches in the way that you do for mattress stitch, you don't tighten it as you go. Like for every stitch mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. maybe four or five stitches Mm -hmm. And so your your garment is sitting there with the yarn going across those stitches very loose and open and so the so that the two pieces are apart. Mm -hmm. And then after you've done a few stitches and then you pull the yarn tight and it snugs all up mm -hmm. like magic. And I know there are some people who do it stitch by stitch, like tighten at every stitch. Mm -hmm. But this way of doing it I think is great. I, it's probably the totally normal way of doing it. I had never, t never learned it before. I haven't gone and looked at any video tutorials, but I just really like it. It's kind of magical because you can't mm -hmm. really see where that stitching happened. Yeah. It just yeah. snugs it right together. And even if you, even if you aren't like exactly perfect of, you know, this stitch matches with that stitch and you like skip one or skip two or something, it still snugs up nicely and you, you can't mm -hmm. really tell that there's stitching behind it. So, so I use mattress stitch on the sleeves and then on the body. Now you have a different situation because now you have the end of a column of stitches butting up against the end of another column of stitches. Mm -hmm. And so that seeming it, for a while, I, and it doesn't say this in the pattern, how to seam it. It just says seam it. And I was like, okay, that, I can't do mattress stitch there because the stitches aren't oriented top to bottom. They're oriented side to side. And then, and then I thought, oh, I know what I do. I just kind of do duplicate stitch. I do duplicate stitch between the last stitch of one side and the first stitch of the other side. And so you have what look like a row of knit stitches that are really mm -hmm. your seaming. Okay. So that was pretty interesting to do. And it probably has a name and there's probably a tutorial out there about how to do it. I don't know. I didn't look up one. I just, once I started thinking about it, it was like, oh, I just have to duplicate stitch this and catch the top mm -hmm. in the one side and the bottom in the other side and just go along that way. And it worked really well, except when I first did it, I was tightening my stitches like mattress stitch. Or mm -hmm. just like regular sewing, you know, you make tight stitches. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, no, the whole purpose of duplicate stitch is so that you have a stitch that's bridging the gap. It's like another stitch. Another right? row another... of stitches, yeah. Yeah. That, that hold them together. And so you want them to be the same size as all your other knit stitches. Mm -hmm. And so I had snugged them up and I had a definite seam line down. And it was a really bulky seam. It's like, that's not right. That wasn't mm -hmm. what I was thinking was going to happen. I think I just got, kind of got on autopilot and was pulling it tight because I was sewing. Mm -hmm. And once I went back, I undid it and I went back and I did it right or, you know, did it to look like knit stitches. It came out perfectly. I really, I really thought the seaming job was good on this. Mm -hmm. So anyway, hmm. I haven't washed and blocked it. I, I blocked it before I sewed it together with a iron. I just steamed, mm -hmm. steam blocked it. So I still have to actually wash it. I wasn't going to wash and block it because it's a put it in the washer, put it in the dryer sweater. That yarn is washable mm -hmm. and dryable. But I want the sleeves to be a little bit bigger. The arm, the, the bicep part of the sleeve is a little snugger than what I would like. My perpetual mm -hmm. fit problem, right? So um, I'm going to try to block the sleeves a little bit bigger. Okay. But yeah, I'm really, I'm happy with it. It's a little itchy. I thought the yarn was softer than it was. Yeah, I thought it'd be really soft. That's surprising. Yeah, it's half wool, half cotton. It's sock yarn, so 
it's a little maybe you know the wool part of it isn't really soft once i wash it it might be softer i i, mm -hmm. I really don't know because it's only just been steam blocked so I'll, I'll have to let you know on that i think it's going to be a warm sweater too i was thinking it was a summer or spring sweater but i think it's actually going to be a warm sweater it's quite heavy because it's got a lot of cotton in it yeah um, i'm i'm looking at it on ravelry right now as we're talking about it yeah, I only have a I only have a bathroom mirror selfie. <laughs> yeah, I don't have an actually good picture of it, but but I wanted to get it I wanted to get it finished and 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 um, on the Ravelry page for for the episode. Mm -hmm. So so that's finished, and then the not along my my practice prog project is finished. Popping in after the fact here to let you know that the project that I'm talking about is punch needle rug hooking. I'm using an Oxford punch needle to do some rug hooking as my nod along project. Mm -hmm. So I did a, a 12 by 12 square with a pattern from Wooly Walkers. It's one of their floral set. And I actually have the whole set because I was going to make all six of them and sew them together. But I made one as practice and it was, it was a big learning experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, okay. Do tell. So first of all, I learned that um, you actually have to have a frame that's as big as your piece. So I mm. have a 12 by 12 piece, and I had a 9-inch um, embroidery hoop. Okay. So that worked great when I was doing the first nine inch circle. Mm, I see. Oh, but, then but now how do you put over. this thick mm -hmm. rug into the embroidery hoop to get the rest of it? Yeah. So I finagled with it and, and fiddled and got it to sort of hold tight as much as it could on a good portion of it. But at a certain point I had too much rug fabric done and I couldn't mm -hmm. get the rest of it into the embroidery hoop. So I just had to, like, hold it down with my forearm and pull it out with my hand and punch with my other hand. Very awkward. Um, so do you need larger embroidery hoops? Well, yeah. So I think, I think it, you have to waste fabric if you do oh. that, right? Because I'd need a – I have a hoop that's bigger. I have a okay. quilting hoop that I could have used. Okay. But I would have... Oh, I see. But then it's too big for the fabric, right? So you need to... So I had... And I had yeah. a lot of fabric, but mm -hmm. it's bigger than 12... Like a 12 by 12 square mm -hmm. would have fit inside of that embroidery hoop, but then I need fabric all around the outside of that circle, right, to, to fit mm -hmm. in the embroidery hoop as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's okay. You just You just count that waste as part of what you're mm -hmm. what you're making and then I was looking online and what a lot of people who do this you know as probably as their main hobby with equipment and stuff they have wooden frames and so you have a wooden frame with a roller on one end so like if you it's the width of your piece and then you roll it up into the top as you're going along I, there's probably okay. other equipment that I don't know about that, that you can use too. If you're doing a round piece, you just use an embroidery hoop. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a square piece, there's like wooden frames that you use to stretch it out. Okay. A quilting frame or like a needlepoint. Doesn't needlepoint have that too? Like a Well, it's been years since I've done needlepoint, yeah. but you know, my mother used to do it and, and I did it. And I think we just used embroidery hoops. Okay. And it, but then it's not, well, I haven't actually seen your finished piece, but it looks like it's a lot thicker than... Yeah, it's a lot thicker than needlepoint. Needle and yeah. so the needlepoint, now, people who do needlepoint, I might be wrong on this, but, um, you know, we would just, um, the part that was finished would just go in the hoop, you mm -hmm. know, like over the edge of the hoop. Yeah. But it, it's thinner than what you're right. doing, so... So, yeah, um, it's, I'm, I'm sure there's equipment that can handle this problem for me for right now I, the next my next piece 
that I do, my next square that I do, I'll just mm-hmm. do do it using my large embroidery hoop. My okay. my well, it's a quilt. It's a quilting hoop, okay. and I'll just do it using that. Well, the reason I was I was asking about that if you need a larger hoop is that I've got a bunch that left for my mom. Oh. There's a big quilting hoop. You know, it's a big mm-hmm. oval that she used for quilting, oh, and okay. Um, so when you're up, yeah, I'll have to take a look. Take a look at them. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. So yeah, that was the biggest thing I learned was was that. And then the other thing is there actually is a gauge, and it tells you how many little loops should be per inch. Mm-hmm. And I did not do that. And my fabric is super super dense, mm-hmm. and it kind of wants to roll. And then also you you lose definition of lines. Because the little loops are all pushing against each other so much that they push, they push mm. each other out of line. So, so I, I wasn't the outlining stitches are not as clear as mm-hmm. they are in like some of the works that I saw when I looked online and stuff. And then the big thing that I learned, I was just using scraps. Uh, well, that makes it sound like they're small. I was using leftovers, which I have quite a mm-hmm. bit of from the um from a a wall hanging that i did um with all just different colors of green lettuce lettuce colors essentially Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. a gradient of greens and burgundies and then i have some natural gray and what i discovered and i will put a picture of this in the show notes so people can see it what i discovered is that while they were perfect for a gradient the the woven piece that i did they actually don't work very well for this kind of color work because they have very, very similar values. Mm. And so the, the, there's just not a lot of definition between the colors. I mean, the colors are different. I have grays and greens and burgundies and pinks and browns um, and a lighter gray. But there's just, there's just not enough change in value. And so mm-hmm. you can't see the design as well as it was in my imagination. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because my purpose was to use the leftovers that I had, and those were the colors. Yeah. Those were the colors in my, my basket of hand-spun sock, or hand-spun rug yarn. So I was able to use a lot of that. And I don't have enough, really. The other thing I discovered is I really don't have, as, I really don't have enough to make a whole rug out of it. I was thinking Mm -hmm. I would do a practice piece and then I have plenty to then make the rug, but I don't have enough to do. I don't even think I have enough, enough to do another floral square. So, so it it uses a a lot more yarn. It uses a lot of yarn. Mm -hmm. Especially if you do it at such a dense gauge (laughs) as I did, but no, it does. It seems to use quite a lot of yarn. So that was interesting to me. Something, something to keep in mind for our, uh, the latter part of our yeah. discussion. So. Uh, yes. I'll have to weigh it. I didn't weigh it to see how, much, mm-hmm. how many ounces of yarn I used. And then there's, or how many grams of yarn I used. And then there's the backing. But I think I could get a pretty good estimate of how many grams of yarn I used in a 12 mm-hmm. by 12 square. I'll try to do that and put that in, the, put that in my project page. May, I can update on that next time. It's okay. kind of interesting. Right. But yeah, oh, uh, it's so fun. I can't wait to start my next one. Um, I'm starting a miniature one where the whole square fits into the embroidery hoop. Mm-hmm. So that'll be much better. And then I have a small, um, a small punch needle. And I also have uh, cruel yarn. It was a kit. So um, Tori, Wide Angle Mind, sent it to me. And okay. so I'm excited to, to do it. It has a, a bee and a skep design on it. And it's, okay. it's, a, it's all in miniature. It, you know, it's like, a, it's like a rug for a dollhouse. Okay. Kind of <laughs> size. Mm-hmm. It's not even, I don't think, the size for a mug rug. Okay. I, I'll have to see. But anyway, that's my next, my next project. And then... Well, and before mm-hmm. you leave that topic, because this is for the not alone. Uh-huh. Do you, want, do you want to just remind people when the not along ends? Oh, right. Um, so it'll end on August 31st. So you still have time, Marsha. You still have time. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that, too. But I just... <laughs> <laughs> and so you can do anything that is uh, fiber-related but um, not 
knitting, not crochet, not weaving, not spinning is eligible for this. So we've had lots of interesting, lots of interesting things, a lot of sewing, um, some punch needle and other rug techniques. Um, I think there's a, like three other people making some form of a rug. Mm -hmm. Um, there were quite a few, quite a few projects in the finished objects and a lot of chatter in the chatter thread. That's been a really active, fun discussion mm -hmm. in that thread. So, so yeah, August 31st. Okay. Uh, okay. And what else? So I'll put, I'll lump all of these together. Crochet projects. Okay. So I, I got stalled on my cardigan. I was done with the punch needle. I was sick of working on socks. And so I started making crochet bears, the mother mm -hmm. bears for the knit along that the two knit lit chicks do. And so I made a total of six crocheted bears and then two, I had two knitted bears that I'd already started that I finished up. So I've got eight bears. And then someone, and I, I searched and searched my Instagram and Ravelry to remind myself of who sent me this um, information about this pattern. And I couldn't find it, so I'm really sorry. But thank you so much for sending me the information. There's a pattern, and it's called Bianca Honey Queen Bee. <laughs> and it is so cute. Oh, my God. Totally cute. I don't know if you can see this on my on my project page. I'm just going to look but to see if I can find it. She is this really big eyed bee with my in my case she has floppy antennas and wings. And I saw the pattern Bianca Honey the Queen Bee by Bee Crochetive is the designer. And I saw it I, I can't remember if it was in my messages or in Instagram, but I'm like, oh, I have to do this. So I, I got the pattern and I think the pattern was discounted or free for a while. I think it actually, I think it was discounted, but I, I just thought I need to get this pattern right now. So I got the pattern and then we were going on a camping trip. My niece, Sarah, she, um, for Christmas every year in the last few years has given everybody in the family uh, Christmas in July, so a camping trip that we all go on. So all the family, like my my growing up immediate family, my brother, my sister, my mom, her husband, my sister's husband, all my sister's girls were there last year. This year, one of them was missing. Um, and then my one of my sister's girls has two kids, my grandniece and grandnephew, Faye and Kai. So we all went camping for three days. So I started it on the way to the campground and I had it in my bag and I, you know, I've made some things for Faye and Kai, but I didn't really know if they really liked them that much or whatever. But, but I thought, well, I'm making it regardless because I think it's so cute, but if she likes it, I'll give it to her. <laughs> so I was working on it. I was working on a bear and she was like, I want a bear. And I, so I, so I dug out the bee and I said, how about this? I'll make this for you. This is a bee. This is Bianca. And so she's four. And so I, at that point I had Bianca's body done and I showed her the picture and, oh yeah. So I made her out of my neighborhood fiber company leftovers. Mm -hmm. So that beautiful gold Oliver yeah. color mm -hmm. and the beautiful, um, Druid Hill that I think looks like figs and mm -hmm. Oh, it was so fun. I had started when we left to go to the campground and I had gotten the whole body done. And then while we were there, I put on the head and the arms and legs and the, and then the, um, antenna. And then I just put the wings on after we got home and I was supposed to deliver it to them on fr on Saturday when they had a t-ball game, but they, um, they ended up staying at the camping. And so they didn't go to the t-ball game. So I won't, I, I haven't given it to her yet, but it's so cute. So cute. I, that pattern was so fun and it was fun to be making the pieces of it. And they're like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? They were both so interested. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and, and Kai and I were talking about, uh, about it and he's seven and he, you know, likes information. Of course 
he's the oldest child, so he's gotten a lot of rewards. As I, mm-hmm. as I remember, he's gotten a lot of rewards in his life for having information, right? Tell grandma mm-hmm. what you know about, tell so-and-so what you, you know, <laughs> tell the phone while I take your video, <laughs> what you know about this. So, um, he's like, yes, bees have, bees have three body parts. Bees have six legs. I said, yeah, this pattern only has four legs. Do you think I should put on six? And he said, yes, because bees have six legs. And then he said, and it, and it doesn't have a thorax. And I looked at the pattern. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking about the, that it didn't have the right number of legs, but it didn't occur to me that this bee has a body and a head, right? It doesn't Mm -hmm. have three body parts. It only has two. So he says to me, we won't tell Faye it doesn't have a thorax. She won't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was okay with him that <laughs> it was not an anatomically correct bee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's really fun. And then I started a tarantula because I thought I'd like to make him. I'm not sure. He's, he said he doesn't really play with stuffed toys but he was very Mm -hmm. interested in the making of it so I thought well I'll make him a tarantula they're taking care of the school tarantula over the summer (laughs) so I'm sorry (laughs) that doesn't sound well I guess they're pretty benign I guess I don't know yeah they have they have to feed them live crickets Mm -hmm. and of course my niece Sarah she's all for this she thinks this is a great thing well Faye's the one the four-year-old she was three last year They found a scorpion under their tent when they were cleaning up. And Mm -hmm. so they put it in a jar and she carried it around the campground. She named it Mops. (laughs) (laughs) So in her mind, that was a good name for a scorpion. So she likes bugs. Um, Mm -hmm. She likes animals, all animals. So Mm -hmm. anyway, they're all happy about having this tarantula in the house. So I'm making a, I'm making a tarantula with the rest of my neighborhood fiber company druid hill that dark mm-hmm. one so that'll be cool because they'll each have you know an insect mm-hmm. well i guess is the tarantula considered an insect oh uh, no okay it's a no it's an it? arachnid oh arachnid right yeah. of course um <laughs> but they'll be of but course <laughs> of course <laughs> um i'm not as smart as uh kai um uh no but but they'll be the, they'll match because the same yeah yarn Mm -hmm. you know so they'll kind of go together it'll be cute yeah yeah so uh, yeah i'm uh i'm i have to get i'm trying to make it as realistic as possible so i have to get beads for the eyes because they have eight eyes Mm -hmm. and they're small they're really tiny so my Mm -hmm. safety eyes were too big and so i have to get some little little beads so that i can make it have the right closer to the right scale of, mm-hmm. of eyes. So, and then the last thing that I'm working on is that I have, um, my Karoo cardigan in my hands right now. I'm, I'm working on the sleeves. I've divided up the remaining yarn into two equal bits and I'm working mm-hmm. the sleeves as long as I can get them. Hmm. So, so my projects, well, I talked about this in the last episode, but I did finish that the lace market t-shirt by Marie Green. Mm-hmm. Um, and I th- and I talked about how the neck is too big, and I just uh, I've not done anything about it. I've sort of uh, I, I need to finish it because it's a summer weight T-shirt. I should be wearing it, but um, <laughs> I'll work on that. Of course, the weather's not that great, but um, I started another project, so I, it's now sort of sitting there, and I need to get back to it. So, um, but just to remind people, what I was planning on doing is is I think the neckline you pick up stitches, and I think you just knit maybe four rows and bind off. I think what I'm going to do is is rip that out, pick up fewer stitches using uh, smaller needles, and bind off a little less loosely, mm-hmm. and see if that pulls in the neckline. And then also, I think I'm going to change the neckline. I think I'm going to do, instead of stockinette, I'm going to do reverse stockinette, so it curves towards the back, mm-hmm. as opposed to curling towards the front. Yeah. I don't like that. I finished the first sock that I'm using the Shoppel Wool Das Par, which is the socks, they match, the striping matches. Uh, I finished the first one and I've knit probably like now about five, six inches on the leg of the second sock. All right. And then what I cast on was um, a 
summer weight cardigan called Fine Sand by, and this is the part I'm embarrassed to say, <laughs> Heidi Kermeyer. <laughs> We we should actually get in touch with her and tell her how big yes. of a fan you are. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's really kind of embarrassing because I go and I look at patterns and I just like the pattern and then I'm like, oh, it's Heidi Kermeyer. Like, yeah. I just I really want to branch out, but I seem somehow I just really like her pattern, so I will branch out. But anyway. Well, and the other thing I find is there are certain like the yarns I want to use and the gauges that I like. Mm-hmm. There are certain design designers. I think that typically have patterns at those gauges. Yeah, That's that another thing it. that happens to, that happens to me when I, because mm-hmm. I have a tendency to go look for patterns based on the gauge that I got, mm-hmm. and I find the same patterns popping up in the pattern search. And yeah. the only criteria yeah. that I'm using is the gauge. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's another thing that can happen. That could be it. Mm-hmm. But the yarn I'm using is Fibra Natura Unity. It's cotton. Um, it's a blend. It has cotton and wool and linen in it, I think. Um, and I didn't realize it when I bought it, but it actually has sort of thick and thin parts of the yarn, mm-hmm. which when you knit it up, it's kind of rustic looking. I, I wasn't sure how it was going to look, and I'm really liking the look of it and the feel of it. And I have finished the yoke. It's a top-down cardigan. Um, it's kind of open front, no buttons or anything. So I finished the yoke and I have done probably seven inches from the underarm down. Okay. And it's an interesting pattern because it doesn't have the like raglan sleeves, which is typically like a top down sweater has raglan sleeves. This one, all of the yoke shaping is done with increases. Well, obviously a yoke top down, <laughs> obviously a top down sweater with a yoke is going to be increases, but that it's all across the yoke. So you do increase and then knit three stitches, increase right. three stitches, you know, all the way across. Next row, there's four stitches in between right. those increases. Kind of like a hat. All, yes, all, all the way down to, yeah. I think you end up with like uh, six, 15 stitches between the increases. Mm-hmm. And there's a uh, right lifted increase on one side of the back and a left lifted increase on the other side of the back. It took me a while to figure out that left lifted increase, but I finally figured it out. Anyway, that creates the shaping, but also creates a very subtle pattern too. And I was looking at other people's projects and uh, many people actually, instead of doing the lifted increase, they just did a yarn over. So it makes kind of a lace detail, like a oh, holes. right going all the time but I decided I wanted to have do the the not have that mm-hmm. look so it's, it's an interesting pattern I'm now at the point where you're doing two increases down the back but decreases on the sides so the back is going to stay the same size but it's going to make this um what am I trying to say the shape you'll be well it's not really shaped because you're doing you're ending up with the same number of stitches. Right. But you'll see this line going down of, of increases. Yeah. And it's um, sort of cur- it sort of curves the fabric a little bit, maybe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then on the front, it's all increases, no decreases, just so as the front's getting larger and larger, you know, as the, the front piece. Anyway, but it's, it's a nice pattern. I'm enjoying knitting on this one. And um, it's easy to remember. You just have to count. Like the first row, you do your increases then do five more rows of just stockinette, go back to one row of increases, mm-hmm. just that's all the way down. And Anyway, so I'm working on that. Um, okay, the knot along. I, there's two things I'm going to do for the knot along. I'm going to do the beeswax wraps. So I've got the beeswax that you sent me. I've got the jojoba oil and the resin, the um, pine resin, I think. Uh-huh. I've got all the supplies. I don't have fabric. I was going to go out to the fabric store near my house to get it, and it's closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to find another fabric store to go get fabric. Yeah. And um, I think so that's... Uh, yeah, I, hmm. I think everything... We don't have any fabric stores in the area except Joann's. Yeah. So I, I don't know... I think there are other fabric stores, like small ones. Mm, mm -hmm. There used to be Nancy's Sewing Basket on Queen Anne Hill. That closed a year and a half ago, I think now. Um, So I'm not really sure where to go other than Mm -hmm. Joann's. So that's uh, my plan. But I don't need any. I just need cotton. Yeah. Printed cotton fabric. Mm -hmm. I am going to do that. And I have till the the end of August to do this. Um, But the other thing I'm going to was 
I said I was going to work on were the drapes that I ordered um, that need to be taken apart so then they can be rebuilt to use in the living room. Uh huh. I'm not going to go into the whole sad story of these draperies because it's been exceedingly upsetting to me, <laughs> this whole <laughs> thing. But I think I had mentioned that I had ordered them on eBay from a seller in France. And their linen, I had two sets of curtains. One are cotton with, um, they're like a tartan. And the other were linen with wool embroidery, cruel embroidery on them. And when they arrived, they were damaged because they were, the package was soaked with water and they had begun to mold. And I contacted the seller. She said, go get them cleaned. They've been insured at full value. So I go get them cleaned. Most of the spots came out. They're not perfect, but they're, they're usable. And so she filed the claim with the shipping company and she received partial payment, not the full amount, but just half the amount of the cost of cleaning them. And she said she was going to contact the shipper again to find out why she didn't get the full amount. And then I contact her, say, I'm going to Scotland, just letting you know I'm going to be out of the country. Radio silence. I come back, say, I'm back. Uh, just checking in, radio silence. Anyway, I've never heard back from oh, her. Man. She will not respond to me. And so I finally, I called eBay. They can't help me because there's a 30-day limit and the curtains arrived after the 30 day, you know, 30 days from the date of purchase, they arrived after that. And so then I was working with PayPal and they said I could not get, um, they could not help me because I had altered the drapes from their original state because I had cleaned them. <laughs> Oh my god. Because they were molding, so I had to clean them. And so I said, I don't want my money back for the draperies. I just want them I want the money for the cleaning. Or at the very minimum, give me what she's received. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she has not responded to me. I finally got um PayPal to send her an email saying that the customer, me, just wants the money that she's received from the shipping company for the insurance for the yeah. and she won't she will not respond. Wow. And I will get back to my draperies when I'm doing with them, but I, I find it so upsetting that if she had just said, you know, I want you to go away. I don't want you to want to deal with this anymore. So I want you to go away and stop contacting contacting me. I could deal with that better than no communication yeah. at all. I I'm beginning to suspect the reason why she stopped communication is I suspect she probably did not pay for insurance right. for them. Mm -hmm. I paid her to insure them. Right. But I think she kept that money and didn't insure them, yeah. is what that I suspect. That would be my guess, and, yeah. And so when she sent me a thing saying she received partial payment, I don't think it's for my drapes. It's for something else. Or she's just I lying. That, or she's so lying. I'm much yeah, more cynical than you. She's just lying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to just learn to accept the fact that um, I paid you know, for the shipping. I paid for the insurance. I've now paid for the cleaning, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, now, so what I really want to say, the reason I'm giving all this background is I've done nothing with the drapes <laughs> because I, did, I didn't know, I didn't know what I should do yeah. because it, there's this dispute going on and I, I don't want to send them back. And um, so I knew I was going to do that, but I was just like, I don't know what to do. So I was just waiting. Yeah. I've now decided I'm never going to get my, see my money. Um, I'm never going to hear from her, and now I just need to move on. So I'm hoping this weekend we're all going to get together. Because remember I said I wanted my friend Gary mm -hmm. and my brother Mark and Kim all to sit and help me rip these, these drapes apart. So hoping this weekend we'll all be together and um, we can start uh, oh, taking them apart. So, and I have a, there's a uh, company that makes draperies, and so what they're going to take the fabric mm -hmm. and reconfigured into the draperies and I'll have them interlined and lined. Um, so I've got the rods, the curtain rods have arrived. It's, I'm all ready to go. I just now need to go and, and I picked out the lining. So they have to order that. Um, and so I'll get to work on it. But the, the next thing is I have to just now take them all apart. So, and that's your not a long project is taking them apart. Yes. Yeah. Is to take them all apart. And, and then a big part of it is I, <laughs> A big part of probably ripping them up, taking them apart and disassembling them will help with the cathart being cathartic to just move on from this mm -hmm. because I have been I have been really upset about it. I didn't realize how upset I was about it. So it's now time to let it go. Let it go and, and move on and enjoy the fabric. Yes, and so this will be the last time I discuss it in the <laughs> podcast, I swear. <laughs> 
So that's it for my the non-log, and that's it for me with projects. All right. So, Kelly, as you know, we've been answering questions from listeners, and we received two questions, which we're going to discuss today. And the first is from Fiddle Witch, Joanna. Her question was, I also appreciate your segments on how to get more out of Ravelry and tricks on using the site. Like, I need to spend more screen time. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is true. Uh-huh. Um, That's and, a whole uh, other topic that we could talk about sometime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she also asked about leads on who else is doing wonderful work out there. Who are your or who are our favorite unsung designers? And then also Sane One, Kathleen, asked, um, I like to hear more about some of the RAV groups you belong to. Mm-hmm. And Kelly, I'm going to sort of let you lead this discussion only because, well, you spend way more, t- way more time on Ravelry than I do. <laughs> no, but you're far more connected on Ravelry. You're in a lot more groups than I am. And you participate, you know, you do a lot more um, research on there than I do. So I'm going to sort of let you sort of lead this discussion um, and I'll okay. chime in. All right. Um, well, one of the things I've talked about already as one of my favorite features of Ravelry is the advanced search. And what I didn't know until uh, fairly recently is that there's advanced search almost everywhere on Ravelry. So you can, you can search forum posts, you can search groups, you can search projects, you can search your own stash all with the advanced search function that has all of the different filters that you can place. Most commonly, the advanced search is used for patterns. That's the thing that I'd use it most for. Um, And and that's, I'm going to give that as an example, but but I just want to throw that out there that look around when you're on a Ravelry page and you're, you know, typing anything into the search box or you're on one of the main pages like projects or people or patterns um, look for that little link uh, for advanced search because you can do a lot of really interesting filtering of your of your searches Mm -hmm. so I've talked a little bit before about using the advanced search but it has more capability so so many more capabilities so I'm going to talk about that again advanced search for patterns is what I've talked about before I'm going to kind of continue with that I've been using the advanced search because I, you know, often will select a pattern by gauge rather than select a pattern and then see if I can get gauge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so I've talked a little bit about that, but with the discussion that's been going on about diversity and inclusion and uh, dyers of color, uh, makers of color, how to get them to be promoted a little bit more actively you know they don't always have as much promotion by yarn companies or larger platforms Um, that whole discussion that's been going on here on Ravelry and on Instagram I thought I would show you a way that you can actually find patterns from designers who are Mm -hmm. people of color so for example there's two bundles that I have found that I think are really nice so you first would have to find a bundle that you could favorite and so this technique is a way to uh, find patterns based on bundles that are in your favorites so for Mm -hmm. example there's a bundle called solidarity swap designers and there's another bundle both of them will be linked in the show notes called uh, poc designers to lift up And then there's another set of bundles that Mary Heather B, she's the Ravelry VP of Operations, and she has a great set of bundles on her favorites page. And I know that Ravelry has been doing their best to try to feature people of color, designers of color. So Mm -hmm. in her bundles, I think she's, she's taken an effort to make sure her bundles are inclusive. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at them, so I don't, know that for sure but I suspect that they are so that would be another place to go and look for bundles that you could favorite so first you have to have some bundles that are favorited and then if you go to the patterns and you search um, you select the pattern page and then you you select pattern browser and advanced search so that gets you to the advanced search 
And then once you're, once you're there, one of the categories of filters is my notebook. And so for example, you can use that to filter patterns that are in your library already, or patterns that you favorited already, or patterns that you've had as a project before. So the, there's all kinds of categories inside of my notebook. But one of them is favorite bundles. And so any bundles that you favorited, if you click on favorite bundles, you'll see a list of them. And then you can select, I only want patterns from this particular bundle that I favorited, or I only want mm -hmm. patterns from this other particular bundle that I favorited. And so, for example, if you had favorited the Solidarity, Solidarity Swap Designers and POC Designers to Lift Up bundles, if those were in your favorites, when you click on that filter, Favorite Bundles, you could then select either or both of those, and then you'll get patterns that meet your other criteria and that are in those bundles. So oh, your criteria okay. might be, I want a pattern that's for knitting, not crochet. Mm -hmm. I want a pattern for a hat and I want it to use bulky yarn and I want it to be in one of these two bundles. Oh, okay. And so then instead of getting, you know, 50 gazillion hat patterns that use bulky yarn, you'll see only the patterns that use bulky yarn that are in those two bundles who have designers that are people of color. And then you can make a choice from that. And so it makes it a lot easier to purposefully select and, you know, try out some of the designers that you wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily see on the hot right now page. Okay. Right? And so you can, and so you can support designers who are people of color. So that's the example um, and it's really timely with the discussion that's been going mm -hmm. on about, you know, how do you use your dollars to support your values? You know, it's timely in that way. Um, but also it's a feature that has really wide application because mm -hmm. you can, you know, what you're searching on, you can sort in many, many different ways. So that I think is the best feature of Ravelry is the advanced search, whether you're searching in patterns or you're mm -hmm. searching your stash or you're searching projects or, you know, any number of advanced searches all have all those little filters. And if you search, if you like browse around through the filters, I think you might be surprised by some of the different filters that are there, like how you could just mix like mix and match all the different mm -hmm. features that you're that you're looking for. And this this feature that I talked about where you can select favorite bundles is one that has I think recently been added. And then just to to kind of add to that topic, if you are interested in being able to know who, you know, who to support, if you're interested in supporting designers of color and and makers of color, you can also um follow on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, there are two Instagram accounts. One is uh, BIPOC Makers and the other one is BIPOC in Fiber. Mm -hmm. And um, they were both recommended to me by Lady Die Yarns. Mm -hmm. And she's been posting, also been posting lists of independent dyers and other makers who are people of color mm -hmm. and are not always well supported or well publicized. Mm -hmm. It's tricky when you're not making it in to the hot right now. If you're not already popular, it's mm -hmm. hard to get more popular. Right. Right. right? I mean, that's, that's the way mm -hmm. algorithms in, in social media right. platforms work. And so, and so making a conscious effort to see other things is yeah. as important. These are two ways. Uh, the, the Instagram accounts, mm -hmm. BIPOC and Fiber and BIPOC Makers are are two ways to to do that yeah. to add to your yeah. to your Instagram. And Kelly, I'm just going to throw in for our listeners too that for one of the prizes for our not along is a skein of yarn from Lady Dye Yarns. So, so oh right, yeah, it'll be one of the prizes. Well, as you were talking, I was experimenting with this as you were um, with your suggestions, and it works. <laughs> I found there's Good. some really nice patterns that pop up. So I was just All looking right. for hats, really cute ones. It works, it works well. Yeah, it's a fun way to, 
to to see some patterns that you wouldn't necessarily mm-hmm. otherwise otherwise see. Yeah. Another thing I sometimes do is go to hot right now and go to the last mm. page. That's a good idea because the those are just the least mm-hmm. popular patterns for whatever reason and sometimes there's a reason they're the least popular patterns like mm-hmm. they have no picture. You know, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. but it's interesting to look at the hot right now mm-hmm. in reverse. You know, look at the least popular patterns first. Well, I uh, say if people can listen to our <laughs> podcast in reverse, we can search patterns in reverse. <laughs> in reverse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I sometimes, I actually, I would say I do that sometimes too, because I find that the hot right now sort of, it's, it's the same designers that keep coming up and, and nothing wrong. I mean, there's a reason why they're hot right now. People like those patterns and, and for good reason, but it's also nice to go. I I do that sometimes go, maybe I don't go to the very end, but I start in the middle and, um, uh, just to Mm -hmm. see what else is there. Right. Well, and you've Mm -hmm. already seen a lot of times I've seen, uh, yeah. If, I mean, if you go there, if you go to that part of Ravelry with any regularity, sometimes it's like, okay, well, there's Mm -hmm. nothing new here. Yeah. Well, very good. So the other question was about, Mm -hmm. groups if you want to see what group someone belongs to you can see it on their profile page so if you go to the profile page at the top you have you know all the information about a person's Mm -hmm. profile so like on my profile page is about me and all the years I've been knitting and crocheting etc and then you also see all the different um, profile pictures they've used over the years, which I should probably do a little editing because I have quite Especially that one from Halloween, Kelly. (laughs) 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 That is pretty gruesome, huh? I'm just teasing you. Yes, but then I see you're in 40 groups. I can look down and see all the groups that you're part of. And there are different categories, and there are a lot of the groups that I'm not Mm -hmm. very active in. Um, But you can see what groups... Uh, what groups I'm in so and they go they're not in alphabetical order because spinner's study is the second one listed I thought they were in alphabetical order anyway uh, two knit lit chicks spinner's study angora rabbit group here's Anne's web Brenda Castile mm-hmm. yeah Brenda Castile the designer mm-hmm. Kathness craft cozy up knits anyway I won't list them all um, because you can go and see them but let me just tell you a little bit about how I organize myself there because 40 yeah. groups is a lot. If you hit the forum, if you go to your forums tab, what you see is the groups that you're in mm-hmm. will be all listed. And over on the right, well, I'm on my browser mm-hmm. on the computer. I'm not sure what it looks like on the phone, but there's a little mm-hmm. wrench and mm-hmm. that's your settings. And so if you click on settings... I'm doing this just so you know while we're talking, so... Okay. There's a lot of different settings, but the one that I've used is the one a little scroll down until you see organize your boards Mm -hmm. into tabs. So I don't have all 40 of those groups, discussion boards, all on one page. And so I don't remember if there was just one tab when I started or if there was two, but you have a little button that you can add a tab. So I have one, two, three, four, five tabs, but I basically have organized them into categories of groups. And once you've, once you have made up your tabs, let me see, I'm going to go back to the page. Once you have made up your tabs, you can take one of the, Uh, groups and move Mm -hmm. it up or down in the tab you just have to select it and slide it up or down and you can take one of your groups and move it from one tab to another very easily too so once you've made them then you just like you know like playing solitaire you Mm -hmm. just move the move the cards to Mm -hmm. a different stack and you can name them what you want to name them and and you can reorder them so you have you know, one, one stack first and then the next one, uh, the little dots at the top of the tabs that you've added. If you grab that, you can slide them over and move them and change the order. 
Yes, does it that does. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that way, if I now go back to my go back to my forums. So now when I look at my forums, I have them in categories. So one category are the groups that I'm most active in. So our group and this is the first tab. So this is the main thing I see when I look on the forums in Ravelry. I see our group and then I'm also somewhat active in the Two Knit Lit Chicks mm-hmm. and the Yarniacs podcast group. Those are the ones that I'm really uh, the most the most active ones. Um, there's a few others that I read mm-hmm. but I don't post very often. Um, I like to read the spinning wheels one to see like what wheels are available that people are like lusting mm-hmm. after and you know what they found on eBay and Craigslist and stuff. So I'll read those. I, de- I rarely post in those, but I do like to look in there. And then I have a tab for other podcasts that I listen to, you know, other ones that I, I might want to look to see if they have an episode or I might want to look when they have an episode, I might want to look at their show notes and get to their show notes quickly or, read comments Mm -hmm. or something, something that they mention, I go in there. So I have one, you know, that's the other podcast that I'm not very active in, but that I listen to the podcast. And then I have groups that are like for techniques and topics like processing fiber, spinning, knitting with hand spun, Irish crochet. (laughs) This is because at one point I thought, Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, (laughs) spinning linen things th- a lot of them I don't read hardly at all the mm-hmm. Niebling group I, I go in there more often to look at all the really mm-hmm. cool pictures of Niebling projects so those are techniques and topics are in another tab and then Ravelry has six, five or six main boards and I put them in a different tab because I rarely look at those the Ravelry main boards mm-hmm. everybody has whether you're in the group or not you have like I was like news and there's one on news and there's another one for if you have want to suggest a feature on Ravelry and that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's how I do it. And I have them organized that way. And because they're organized in that way, I can see like, Oh, in the two use fiber adventures, I have two unread posts. Okay. I'm going to mm-hmm. go read those yeah. posts. Or in the July chat for the Yarniacs, there's, you know, 57,000 unread <laughs> posts. <laughs> and then if, if I want to look at them, I don't start at number one. I, I just go to the mm-hmm. last page or, you know, I just skip a bunch of stuff and just pop in at the very, the mm-hmm. very end of the, of the discussion yeah. and see what's happening. On the ones mm-hmm. I don't keep up on. And mostly the ones I keep up on are in our group. I don't, I don't read all the posts of other people's yeah, groups. It's yeah. too much. And then you can also, I'll just mention this, as um, long as I'm here, you can also, if, if you're looking on the forums page, on the far right of the little box for the forum, so there's topic, activity, unread, and posts, and then there's a little mm-hmm. down arrow. So in the column under the down arrow, if you click, you get some tools for that topic. Okay. So for example, let's say there's a, let's say there's a thread that you want to start following and it's got 500 unread mm-hmm. posts. You can just click in that thing. And one of the choices is go to first unread post, which would put you at the beginning of that 500. That's probably what you don't want to do, not okay. what you want to do. You could just say, you know what, I just want to, I just want to mark them all like I've read them Mm -hmm. and start fresh. And so you can just mark them all as read. And then as new ones come in, you only have to look at what new ones are there. Yeah. Does does. that make sense? So, yeah. So anyway, it's kind of like declaring bankruptcy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to read any of these. I'm just going to. Put it at all totally red mm-hmm. and start today with keeping up. If, if you want to start keeping up on somebody's, but you don't want to see all those other posts. So anyway, okay. I like having them organized in tabs because mm-hmm. otherwise there's too many. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah, that's good information. Inspiring you to increase your screen <laughs> time. <laughs> uh, well, 
<laughs> Not that we need yes. more screen time. And I'm looking, and I'm going to go and I'm going to look through these bundles too because there's some. It looks like there's some interesting patterns. And now that I know how mm-hmm. to search within those bundles, it'll be really helpful. All right, Kelly. Do we have any else? Anything else that we need to discuss? No, we have discussed it all. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, actually, we haven't discussed it all. We're putting off two yes. questions. That we will definitely do yes, next time. Yes, we're putting time. them off again. Yes. Stash and stash. Yeah, stash and stash mm-hmm. busting and spinning. Yes. So our apologies. Yes, Peggy and Cindy Q. We will address your questions next time. And there's actually there's another couple of questions in the in the board. So I'll take a look at, at that. And it's been really fun talking about topics that people have brought up. Things I wouldn't have necessarily thought of talking about well and i was surprised at how much information i do have i always think i don't have that much information but then i kind of like the last time i kind of shocked myself how much i did know (laughs) you know um yeah well yeah yeah. we have one last thing we want to mention and that is the meetup that we're going to have in seabrook washington and that is going to be the weekend of september 20th through 22nd and We'll put links in the show notes to Seabrook, to their website, if you do want to rent a house down there. If you don't want to stay in Seabrook, you can stay anywhere along the coast. Um, You can just use Travelocity or any of those websites to search um, Ocean Shores or Pacific Beach would be good options. And if you don't want to spend the night, just come for the day, any of the days, and stop in and say hi to us. It's the... Meetup is going to be at String Theory Yarn and Fiber, and Gene Chambers is the owner, and we're going to have some events happening in the store. So come for the weekend and hang out in the shop and hang out on the beach, or just come for the day. Save the date. Perfect. All right. Yeah, that's going to be fun, Mark. I know. I'm excited about it. So, and there's going to be some surprises. All right. Yay. Some surprises. <laughs> yes. I can't tell you what they are now because they're surprises. Ooh. Cool. <laughs> All righty. Cool. <laughs> bye. Alrighty, bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit to usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two U's doing, doing our, our part, part for, for World Fleece. fleece.